as me and my new girlfriend Stacy were on our way to my house to get supplies for our camping trip, I received a text message from our buddy Mike asking why I had a new girlfriend every two weeks and why they never meet the same girl twice. So I sent him a message back that said, I'm not looking for commitment. When we got to the house, we both took a shower and packed some clothes and toiletries and some food for the trip. I loaded all of our supplies into the trunk, and we headed off to my favorite campground in the woods of West Virginia. When we got to our campsite, we looked around to see if we had any neighbors for the night, and there was another tent already set up about 20 yards from our spot. I told Stacy to come with me and meet the people of the other tent, and she followed. As we approached, we saw a middle-aged man emerge, followed by a woman around his same age. Their names were Sam and Amanda. We introduced ourselves as Kevin and Stacy and told them that we are going to be cooking dinner soon and asked them if they wanted to eat with us. And they agreed. A couple of hours later, Stacy went to find some dry firewood nearby to use for our fire and I began to set up a small pit to contain it. After the fire got going, I set up a pot and began making my special camping soup. All four of us gathered around the fire and began to make small talk as I pulled some ground meat out of the cooler and put it into the pot to cook. We sat around laughing and drinking as the soup simmered over the fire and the heavenly aroma wafted around us. I got some disposable bowls and spoons out of our supplies along with a large loaf of French bread. I ladled up some soup into the bowls and broke off hunks of bread for us and our company and we ate and talked happily about our lives around the campfire. After dinner, Amanda and Stacy both announced that they needed to use the restroom. I let them know that there was a little cement building nearby that had separate restrooms. I told them to go towards the big patch of brush on the south side of our campsite, and the building would be on their right, past the big maple tree. As the girls made their way towards the bathroom, me and Sam sat and talked. He remarked that the soup was the best he had ever eaten, and how the meat was so tender. He asked me what my secret was, and I told him I only use the best cuts, and I tenderize and package it myself. As the girls are returning, I begin to pack up the food and trash, and put it away, and announce that we need to head to bed, because we have an early day tomorrow. When I awake around two, I notice that I'm alone in the tent, so I scramble outside and hastily open up the car and stuff the tent and everything into the back seat and grab my revolver out of the center console. I meet Stacy outside the bathroom and ask her to follow behind the building to the door marked Maintenance. I just put a key into her hand and told her to unlock the padlock and go inside because I have a surprise for her. She began to look unsure as she hesitantly put the key into the lock and turned it. The shackle popped up, and she handed it to me and moved the metal strip to open the door. When she stepped inside, I flicked on the lights, and when she saw what was there, she knew she had made a fatal mistake. She glanced nervously at the deep freezer, a long steel table, the tray with an assortment of treacherous-looking tools and a large, shiny meat grinder at the far left corner. She swiftly whirled around to run, but came face to face with the barrel of my revolver. I took one step inside and pulled the door shut and slid a bar lock that I had on the inside to secure the door. She stared at me and asked what I was going to do to her, and I quite literally told her the truth. I responded with, I'm not going to do anything, but the freezer will kill you, and the beautiful grinder will grind you into more delectable meat for soup that I always cook when I go camping. She began to shudder as she realized that I fed her and those two other poor people the flesh of another person. She asked why I was doing this, and I told her jokingly, so I can put food on the table. She glared at me, horrified, as I chuckled at my own joke. I put my gun back into the waistband of my jeans and just looked at her. She made another futile attempt to make a break for the door, and she instead made a right hook 
that knocked her out. I stripped her and hefted her over my shoulder and waltzed to the freezer and dropped her in like a deer carcass. I closed the lid, locked it with a key on my ring, and walked out the small cement room. I flicked off the lights, replaced the lock on the door, and went home to get a real good night's rest, because I had a big job to do the next day.